Hi everyone, this is Elixir's most published author, Bruce Tate. In this video, we're going to talk about OTP, the soul of Elixir. This video is an introduction to core concepts. If you want to dive deeper, I invite you to come to Groxio. There you will find video courses and professional training opportunities to get that job or secure the promotion that you've been looking for. Let's go. Hey everybody, it's Bruce and the Dog on the Floor, and we're here to talk to you about OTP. And remember, OTP is just a library with a common API in the shape of a behavior that's for message passing and managing life cycles. And we want to focus on that life cycle piece. So far, we've created supervisors in a way that they create processes when we launch a particular application. But sometimes we want to create them on demand, and that's the job for a dynamic supervisor. So let's get started. Recall that we've been working on this Big Brother application, which has two pieces. One is the process machinery itself for a service. And all this service is, is basically a, a server with some state. And the state is effectively a name and some kind of quote that this character uses. And we've been using characters in the book 1984, commonly known as Big Brother, by Orwell. And let's take a look at the supervisor. In this case, this supervisor creates three processes, and these processes are created when the application comes up. So if I go back here to my code editor, I can create a terminal, and I can say IXS mix. And you'll notice that these three each come up. But one of the things that I sometimes want to do is create these on demand after the application has already been started. Like for example, maybe I've got an application like Phoenix that has a process that manages a set of channels or that manages a live view single page application. So in those cases, I'd want to be able to set those on demand. And to do that, I want to use a dynamic supervisor. So let's see what the manual says about them. All a dynamic supervisor is, is effectively a supervisor that can start processes on the fly. So in this case, it tells us how to set one up. So rather than creating all of these individual processes like this. Let's go ahead and process and comment those out. Rather than starting individual servers, I start a server starter. And this is the name of the gen server that we want to create. And yes, a supervisor or a dynamic supervisor is a gen server. And then a set of options. And the only option here is the name. And in this case, Let's call this something that will take us less time to type, so dsup. So I'm going to start this much, and then I'm going to copy one of these child specifications. And you might notice that these two look alike, right? So all we have is two tuples where the first element is the implementation of the server, and the next element, in this case, it is a keyword dictionary. And in this case, it is the tuple which has the state that we want to create with our server. And what I'd like to do is use this dynamic supervisor to start individual elements. So we'll come on down here, we'll exit this terminal, we'll start IEX again, and now I should be able to see the supervisors or the children in this particular supervisor. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say here, Gen server dot which children or let's see what I should be able to say supervisor dot which children and I should be able to pass it the name of that thing which is sup okay and it says that I have one child instead of the three children that I have before. And this child is a server starter. Well, how do I use it? Well, I can use the dynamic supervisor API. So let's say, let's say dynamic supervisor dot, and then I'm gonna do a tab. 
And one of the APIs under here is start a child. And it's a two tuple just as we would expect it to be. Start child. So, and you can guess that the first element of this based on Elixir is going to be a dynamic supervisor. And since a dynamic supervisor is a process, this could either accept a PID or some type of a node name, node and PID tuple, or some type of a registry ID. And in this case, we're going to give it that registry ID, which is the name. So I'm gonna say dsup, right? And then the last thing is the child that I wanna start. And you don't have to work very hard to guess the format that that's going to come in. In fact, we're gonna pass it one of these mini child specs. Let's just grab the first one off of our commented list here. And you can see that we're starting up that particular application. And in fact, it should be pretty easy for us to go ahead and modify this to say, to create another client API that says start def start child. And this is going to have the initial arg. And then I can just drop in this line of code. What's this? Well, that's the name of our dynamic supervisor. And we have just kind of a, an easy name to type and understand right here. But typically, this is going to be the name of the application. So maybe brother dot dynamic supervisor or something like that. That's a little bit more descriptive. But that's a little bit overkill for what we're doing here. And then we have the tuple right here. And the tuple has this module. So I'll do it this way. And then it has that initial argument that we've been using all along. So I can recompile this. And I can grab another one of these. And actually, I don't need that whole thing, do I? I just need this piece. All right, so Parsons is working hard, working hard. And I can... I could say brother dot start child and I can pass it this information here and you can see that it's starting Parsons and now I should have two children started the initial one that we started here and Parsons but we don't have to guess we can get the children right so the children for this supervisor is only the dynamic supervisor. So where are its children? Well, I can run the same API, but for the dynamic supervisor. And now I could see that there are two processes started dynamically. They're both workers. They're both implemented with the brother module and each one of them has a process ID and we can access those individually. So if I say process dot where is, I can type Julia, and that's this 166 right here, or I could type Parsons, and that's this 190 right here. So all we've done is built in an API to dynamically start something and we've replaced the typical list of children with a child starter. That's all we've done. Everything else is going to start exactly as it did before. I start up my supervisor and my supervisor starts the dynamic supervisor, which is optimized for creating processes on the fly. And then I can call my single function to start individual children. And presumably in this file, I could also interact with it in whatever way that I see fit. And this abstraction lets me do things on the fly when it makes sense for my application to do so. And that's an excellent thing. From Bruce and the dog on the floor, this is Groxio Learning. <laughs>